Hello and welcome back to Let's Play The Viceroy. Um, so, basically there has been a, uh, a vote and... There are cultures uh, within our region. The Commonwealth. Oh, there oh, are... Oh, oh, there we go. Uh, and there is a majority of people, or a plurality at least. The most votes are going towards Imperial Reformers. Um, which, for reference, Empire of Elect, as it was, is all but gone. Those who consider themselves Imperial Reformers try to breathe new life into its ancient customs and prepare the ground for its revival. So our middle class are the Commonwealth, our upper class are the Imperials, and the lower class are the Panarchs. Um, now, I have gone in and tested the game out a bit in between the first video and this one, uh, and I sort of understand the gameplay mechanics a little bit. Uh, they're quite complicated, but I'll try to explain them as best I can when we get into the game. Um, but let me explain kind of what this culture actually means in game terms. Uh, so the lowest class is the class of people who are poor, basically, obviously. And uh, poor citizens are, in general, the ones who oppose your regime. Um, and they will be panarchs for us. Whereas the people who are going to support us, unsurprisingly, are the Imperials. Uh, our technologies are going to give us cheaper inter-district trade cost. Uh, an extra specialist multiplier for industrialists. Uh, and plus one crowding limit, so we have more people put into one place. Um, so let me go ahead and click to confirm, and let's read this. Um, you have struggled over such long millennia in the service of your convention convictions. How they have been mocked. The panarchy pays lip service to our righteous rule while laughing through their hands. We have noticed, we have seen, and despite their pride, despite their foolishness, you have been made viceroy. How could you not be? None can deny your greatness, your long history of success, and the legitimacy of your rule over those who cannot rule themselves. Through your works, through your deeds, through your words, you will lift high those who have fallen, those who have been trampled underfoot by the twisted goals of the panarchy. You will make them whole, you will make us whole. Lean upon the strong arm of the commonwealth, but rely most upon yourself. For it is through you that the empire will rise again, starting here, starting now, starting with those among us who are the least. For every one of us, from the highest panarch to the most wretched among the fallen territories, are imperial subjects. We do not deserve to have suffered like this, so far from the light of the empire, from true government. It is your duty and privilege to return the light of the empire to them through your personal sovereignty. So go forth, mighty Viceroy, and be the spark that rekind rekindles the flame of our destiny, in the name of the empire that was and will be again. So there are different uh, little intro blurbs for each faction. This is the Commonwealth's faction. regional administrative capital and headquarters of its many missions and bureaus. It is also the site of the Vice Regal Palace, where you can return to discharge assignments and receive new territories. Right, so she's basically telling us uh, we can access this palace here to... Uh, I assume this is supposed to be us. Uh, maybe that's just an electronic billboard, actually. Don't think of it. Uh, but anyways, the uh, the palace. So if we go here, this is basically our the character. The palace is the physical seat of your authority and the principal location of your highest bureaus and functionaries. While between assignments, you may reassign influence gained from your vice regal successes to various bonuses tailored to your administrative style. Right. So right now we have no extra influence points. So all we have are the 10 points that we have invested into Administrator. Um, and this is our character sheet, basically. Like These are the bonuses that we personally bring to our rule over whatever territory we're in charge of. Um, so the Administrator perk decreases bureaucratic overhead. Uh, that is very significant, and we're going to leave all of our points invested in that at the start. Uh, because I think that's the most important thing uh, to concern yourself with. Now, if I go back to the palace after going in through this portal, then I will not be able to access my character again. The only, the next time we'll be able to see this screen is when we have successfully dealt with or you know abandoned the territory that we're being sent to. Um, so that's that. Now, the university. This is basically just the in-game encyclopedia. The but uh, State University. Yeah, she she just basically explains that there. Um, 
Now, this is all the interaction we can do on the, the homeworld planet. Uh, we go through the gate here, through the portal, and we'll enter into the system that we're going to be in charge of. And I'll go through it. And so this is the main this challenge we have to deal with. Have this, is a, to this is it unique. It contains systems which conduct trade between themselves and the Commonwealth Gate, portals to several neighbors, and the regional artifact. The people here need your oversight to guide them back to their former glory after the recent calamitous collapse. Should you succeed, their influence over Commonwealth politics will ensure you ever larger bureaucratic appropriations fail, and their misery will reduce your influence accordingly. Right, so, um, this is the system, or rather the territory that we're in charge of, and you can see there are several systems within it, each that have their own planets. Each planet also has districts on which uh, the actual population live. And it's at the district level that we generally make most changes that we can. Anyway, this is the challenge we have to confront, the primary challenge of this sector. Hyperspace shattering. The profound shattering of local hyperspace has left this territory spiritually dead. The challenges it left behind make your people unhappy and hinder economic specialization. Watch for signs of rebellion and seek to improve happiness and general productivity. And these are the individual problems that we face, and it will tell us how many actual numbers we have. So let's look at them. First, we have a blood cult. A disturbingly popular religion in this district practices human sacrifice. Because the sacrifices are ostensibly willing enough, and the religion is popular enough, the Commonwealth has not intervened. But the practice causes unhappiness both among its practitioners and the general public. 29 districts currently suffer from this blood cult, and the blood cult causes minus one happiness. Uh, there will be a cure for all of these conditions, by the way, but we'll get to that in a bit. Next, we have to deal with hyperspace infections. Hyperspace contains its share of disease, and some of that disease has found its way across the veil and into the life of this district. These painful, untreatable hyperspatial infections frequently cause infertility in adults and often prove fatal to children and newborns. I mean, we have 26 districts challenged here. Um, so, but by the way, this is quite a few districts. Uh, 29. We probably have, like, 30 something districts in total I'm gonna guess um, but yeah that's a very large proportion of our empire that has that uh, and that decreases pop growth rate right so interference fields potent fields of overlapping forces are being generated by the unfavorable hyperspace geology of this district destroying and degrading industrial equipment and hugely limiting the industrial productivity of the area until this can be corrected industrial activity will be curtailed and that's just a straight hit to our industrial productivity, and 20 districts suffer from that. Infectious psychosis. There is a predatory thought pattern, a form of hyperspatial life, that infects the majority of people on this planet and inflicts upon them a sort of psychosis that subtly impairs their capacity to reason. The effect is a general decrease in the technical capabilities of the entire planet. Six planets suffer from this, and it reduces their science capacity by 50%. That is pretty horrible. We're going to need to resolve that very quickly. Paranoid culture. Paranoia runs riot through the culture of this world. The cultural touchstones of its civilization are nothing but a disturbing list of conspiracy theories. This unfortunate state of mind leaves the culture of this world in a broken and unworkable state that outsiders find deeply unsettling. That decreases our cultural specialist multiplier. That's not nearly as bad. Infectious psychosis is definitely far more severe of a problem, but that's still rather significant. And lastly, selfish political class. The political class of this planet is entirely self-interested. They exclusively pursue their own interests to the endless detriment of their people. This results in an inefficient, ineffective government and uh, whose efforts who are wasted flattering the vanity of fools. Five planets suffer, and that causes 5% bureaucratic overhead, and there is no overhead for the cure. I mean, we'll get to cures in a bit, but yeah, that's pretty bad too. Hyperspace darkness. Uh, during a hyperspace collapse, people have been severed from a certain feeling of connectedness most never knew that they had. This feeling of a spiritual isolation causes widespread depression and fear among the otherwise spiritually sensitive, replacing their joy or their spiritual joy with despair. It causes minus one happiness in two full systems. So you can see here we have district, planetary, and then system-wide crises, but. Hyperspace Collapse. Transit through local hyperspace remains disrupted by a large-scale hyperspace collapse. Transportation of bulk industrial goods in and out of the system remains dis difficult. 
and local industry cannot utilize any of the many manufacturing techniques that take place in part in hyperspace. Two systems challenged and it's an industrial specialist uh, penalty. Hyperspace predators, minor, minor predatory entities native to hyperspace have found ways to leak out into our reality and prey upon the life forms of the system. Although humanity is safe from their attacks, plants and animals are sickened and eventually killed by being devoured by these invisible creatures from the inside out. And that's biological specialist multiplier affecting two systems. So we have nine challenges at the moment. More will appear as we play, but uh, we can resolve each one of these things, and doing so is ideal. Um, but the question is, what do we prioritize? Uh, and to answer that, we're going to need to take a closer look at the status of our empire. So let's begin by examining the actual systems within it. We have three systems. We have Caldwell, population of 36.2 billion, average wealth below one, that's very bad. Uh, and high, much, much higher rebel support than our support. At the start of the game, rebels do generally have much higher support than us. Um, Curtis, 16.5 billion people live in the system with an average wealth of 0.92. Um, and then again, less proportional problem there with regards to rebel support. So that might be a better place to invest in our uh, uh, influence control. Rodriguez, population 30 billion. Uh, this is average wealth of one, so this is our most wealthy system. But it also has rebel support problems. Still not as bad as uh, Caldwell. So we're in a bit of a predicament here, as our most populous uh, planet features the most rebel support. Um, while our least populous planet has the most support for us. Uh, but... Let's take a look at some of the individual things here. Caldwell is probably our most important system uh, because it has the most people. But we'll see if it has uh, what exactly is going on here. This is one of many systems under your control. It is comprised of several planets, each subdivided into administrative districts. Here you can review detailed information about the economic, foreign, and domestic affairs of this system and its component parts examine existing and available infrastructure, and consider the grave challenges left here by the recent collapse. Okay, so this screen we're looking at right now is the system status screen. Um, and here we're looking at the entire economy, specifically of this system of Caldwell. Uh, and we can see industrial, biological, and cultural productivity right here. This is the amount of uh, goods from these categories that are being produced, or rather the amount that the multiplier affects the production by. And so you can see here is the amount of actual uh, individual people assigned to these labors that have uh, the production. And lastly we have specialization, which right now nobody specialized. Uh, there is a multiplier, it might be worth to specialize in something, but we'll leave that alone for now. Uh, and then we have various effects. So these little sockets can have uh, effects in them uh, and there can be more than one uh, but it, there's just a hole because none's there right now and in industrial for instance we have a specialist effect a specialist multiplier in fact so that's a positive thing we have a beyonder engine here which uh, uh, apparently is some sort of energy production facility that gives us a bonus of industrial specialist multiplier. So if we apply a specialist here, the amount of goods they produce, or rather their productivity, will be multiplied by 2.17. So let's take an example here. Um, these Commonwealth citizens... Uh, well, actually, let's take our pan panarchy because they're more significant. At the moment, we can see their productivities. I can't mouse over it, but if you look there, you can see their productivities. Their current industrial productivity is 1.39 um, and the others are roughly equal in the other categories if we put them all into specialists then their industrial productivity will uh, change to 3.01 uh, because it's being multiplied by the specialization however they are no longer producing any of the uh, biological or cultural goods and again this is at the system level so we would be assigning everybody all populations to that, which is highly bad. That's very 
not a good thing. Um, uh, and then we have, like, essentially no Imperial citizens, because no one's wealthy enough on this planet. Uh, and then we have 30... Uh, this is in billions, I believe, or perhaps hundreds of millions. Yeah, it's 100 million units. Uh, so... Uh, we have a negative effect here. We have the Hyperspace Predators, which penalizes our... There, there's actually just no bonus to specializing in, uh, in agriculture right now. Uh, you can see the biological productivity at unspecialized, 1.56. Bring them down here to specialized, it's still 1.56. So, no point in specializing there. And then cultural, we do have a very slight modifier. Uh, 0.33 bonus extra. Let's take a look at the domestic tab. So the system population, 36.2 billion. The average planet has 12.1 billion living on it. And the average district has 2 billion living in it. Although these numbers are averages, so we're going to have to look more specifically to see that. Um, goods consumed. So, basically this number, you want this to increase. And the way that that happens is citizens get richer. So what happens is, like, the production that happens on this screen, um, if we did this and we produced three industrial goods, which would not be wise because it's slower overall than the total production, we have then, uh, uh, three industrial goods which are going to be able to be purchased by citizens with credits and they do that by getting an income from working um, and whatever they spend on consumption if they can successfully consume what they need then they will get closer towards improving their wealth level uh, and if they have money left over after doing that uh, then they will spend that money into capital they will invest it in other words and the rate of returns in the local economy will determine where they invest it and how much they get back from it. So that's basically like um, going to determine the rate at which they increase their savings and can advance to the next tier of wealth. Uh, trade costs. This is the amount of money that people have to spend to buy things that are not native to their place that they live in, whether that be their district, their planet, or their system. And it gets more expensive to buy as you increase in the tiers. Now I imagine, since the production is diverse here, that they're probably mostly doing inter-district or interplanetary trade. Uh, but we can see that in more detail later. Prosperity. This is the... Yes, this is just the measure of how close they are to getting a wealth level. So basically, whenever they consume, they add prosperity points. And when they get to uh, 10 prosperity points, then they get one wealth level. Uh, capital. This is the population times prosperity divided by 10. And yeah, this is just the amount of money that is basically available to invest in the economy into the rate of return zones. And we can see here this is the average wealth, uh, 8.83. And that is directly impacting our other factors because we have no bonuses to any of these. It's just based on the amount of wealth that they have. Um, but then they are actually modified later. So that's the base number. And then population growth, for instance, is going down because of the, I think from the happiness modifier. No, it's the crowding penalty you can see here because there's a lot of people living in this system. Uh, some of these stats are not meaningful at the system level. You have to look at them at district level or they won't make sense. Lastly, we have foreign. This is tracking the amount of imports and exports. Um, they can make money from exporting to other systems and things. So that is a, even if they are not consuming a great deal in trade, it might be worthwhile to invest in a trade cost reduction, for instance. Um, now this tab over here on the right, this is a production tab, kind of. Uh, not really related to production. It's actually more like projects and things. Now at the system level that we're at right now, we can't do anything. We don't have any system level projects. The Imperial Reformers, if we go to our technology, we can see this. Um, because so, theoretical science has long I'm since outpaced technological implementation, the quantity of technological... Because there theoretical... There we go. Had to click on that thing. It's a little bit hard to hit. But anyways, uh, the, uh, the technologies we start with right now are the white ones. So right now we have 
Will of the Panarchy, The Panarch's Mercy, Unity of the Commonwealth, and Serenity of the Empire. And because we are Imperial Reformers, we also started with these three technologies down here. Frictionless Highways, Superscalar Towers, and Superconductive Grid. Uh, unfortunately, none of those are useful in defeating our challenges that we have. So, that's unfortunate. But, um... The, all of them do give us district upgrades. You can see here, district, 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 under their descriptions. So I'll get back to tech later, but let's go resume viewing uh, Caldwell, and we'll move now to view one of the planets. Let's see, Caldwell 1. Caldwell 1 has 11 billion, roughly a little bit less than a third of the people that live in Caldwell's system live on this planet. So probably the second largest planet, if I had to guess. Um, it has a uh, average district population of 1.95. Um, the wealth here is higher than the average system wealth, but we're still not at the district level, so that's not particularly meaningful. And we do have some issues here as well. So, for instance, we have a lord bureaucratic and a selfish political class. Luckily, these cancel each other out. Uh, so there's no actual penalty applied to us at the moment. Um, but we will want to cure this nevertheless because of... Uh, actually, this came with the planet, but the tech that we need to cure this is the one that's here. So we will have the, a positive bonus once we research that. That's good. Uh, but we also have hyperspace darkness. This is... Uh, that's a system effect, so that's still impacting uh, the planetary level. Um, this is a primarily industrial world. It makes most of its money from industry. Um, it has a problem, though, with food. It imports a lot of that and spends a lot of money on biological trade. Uh, and most of its imports come from in-system, so that's good. It doesn't have any any imports from out of the system. That's to be expected, though. It's not particularly unspecialized. Uh, let's go into a district, though. Okay, so here's the level that things actually really kind of matter. This is the level where we're going to directly interface with most of the time. And we have the same economy tab as the other pages did. Uh, but here we have... Uh, well, these are in 212 million increments. Um, the population of this planet which is primarily Panarchy and a few Commonwealths. So, very small middle class, and then a very large lower class on this planet. No upper class. Or, you know, infinitesimally small, effectively. Um, and we have a multiplier for industry and a negative multiplier for biological, which would explain why they have to import food and why they export industrial goods. However, even though we do have a positive multiplier for the specialists of industry, we do have a negative penalty from this interference field uh, to our actual base productivity, uh, which is pretty bad, because that will the multiplier would then give each point of productivity basically 100% more effectiveness. Um, and... Sorry about that. Um, so, uh, let's see here. The domestic problems that we're facing in this system are the blood cult, or in this district rather, in District 1, are a blood cult and... I think that's it. I think everything else is beyond the local level. We don't have a cure to any of these problems yet, but we can research them. So to cure the blood cult, for instance, which is the most widespread problem of ours in terms of districts, uh, we would need to get branching facilities, which is a technology that, if we go to our tech screen, branching facilities is here. All the yellow ones, by the way, are ones you need for, for cures. To get branching facilities, we would need to first research miniaturized gate and then jaunting grid. Although, actually, yeah, that's... 
Okay, that's the most efficient way. So we would go Miniaturize Gate, Jaunting Grid, Distributed Thought, and then Branching Facilities. Now luckily we need Miniaturize Gate anyways, because that will cure the hyperspace collapse. Um, and we also can get Mental Unity on the same path, which will cure Paranoid Culture. Uh, now I believe Paranoid Culture and, yeah, that's a planetary, and Hyperspace Collapse is a system-wide. So those are good. We would hit three birds with one stone in that. Still, um, we won't make our choice on which tech to hit yet. Um, let's go back to looking at District 1 of Caldwell 1. Um, so we can build here now an improvement, a project, Frictionless Highways. This is one of our starting faction techs. This would reduce the inter-district trade costs by 100% if we built this. But you can see there in the top right of this little pop-up, it would cost us 1.14 billion credits. In the top here we have our 17.4 billion credits in total. That's our present uh, treasury. Now uh, let's see if that would actually impact this system meaningfully, or if this district meaningfully. So we go to the foreign tab at the district level. This will reduce inter-district trade costs by 100%. There are 324 million credits that are spent to uh, import cultural goods in this uh, in this district, and those are imported from uh, just different districts on the planet. So it would completely eliminate this cost of 324 million. Now the problem is this project costs three times that amount. It would eliminate the trade cost, but it's not necessarily in our best interest to actually do that. So it's not always wise to just build the improvements, even if they have really beneficial uh, state uh, traits. Um, now, this has probably got no issues with crowding, I imagine. It has a very small crowding penalty, a minus one pop growth, but that's countered by the prosperity of the system, so... Um, that's not really significant either. We don't want to spend money. We don't want to spend 1.14 billion to reduce the crowding limit because the uh, penalty is not that significant for us at this point. Uh, lastly, we have Panarch's Mercy, which would uh, Panarch's Mercy is like uh, tech that you have no matter what. This basically eliminates death and makes your citizens immortal, um, and it also costs 1.14 billion here. Uh, this would reduce the uh, population growth rate penalty that we're having from presence of death, and it would also get rid of the um, the weight of mortality modifier because the there would be no mortality. It eliminates the presence of death, um, and therefore the system would not have to detract from the influence gain from weight of mortality. Um, which is good, but again, not worth the amount of money that we would spend. So, probably not wise to invest in any improvements here. We do also have, of course, the uh, superconductive grid, which would increase the specialist multiplier to times three. Uh, that might be worth investing in, but perhaps in a system with more population. We'll have to look at that first. Um, so let's look at some of the other districts on the same planet. We'll go to the domestic tab, and we're going to look for the district with the most people. It's probably this one, but... 2.12, 1.5, oh, this is 2.8, so this is larger, 1.0, 1.02, 3.24, so this is, District 6 is the, uh, has got the most people living in it on this planet, and it only suffers from one malice, the biological one that's affecting the system. Other than that, it has a district uh, bonus to industrial specialization and a uh, system bonus. So it would definitely be good to improve the multiplier here, because that would be a times four multiplier, which would dramatically improve the output of goods here. Um, and uh, we can look here if there's anything worthwhile to reduce trade costs, and I'm not thinking so, not with that amount of money. And there's no real problems here. Um, the only local problem was the Actually, they, they have no district problems at all in this particular district. Let's see what their... Uh, yeah, they have, uh, they have average wealth level 1. 
Prosperity is three. What's their capital produced? Okay, so they're almost ready to achieve a prosperity point here. Because they're at 981 million. Uh, and they need uh, to get to a billion for that, I believe. Um, so let's go back out and go to the Caldwell system as a whole. And we're going to find the biggest planet. So Caldwell 1, for reference, 11 billion. Caldwell 2, 12 billion. Caldwell 3, 11.9. So Caldwell 2 is the largest planet. And which district here has the most? 3.0, 3.18... Alright, so the largest population district on this planet is District 2. This might be the most populous di district in our entire territory. Um, and this district has... Um, I'll be right back. I'm going to pause the recording here for a second.